Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back, Brandon again. In today's video of Picking Plates, we're gonna talk about cheap weights because believe it or not, all weights are not created equal. And I say that fully aware that I spend way too much money on gym equipment, but having the experience of posting a lot of this stuff online and dealing with commentary, I know a lot of people are in the opinion that weights don't really matter so much so there's no reason to spend a lot of money on, let's say, a set of 45s when it's still gonna weigh as much as a cheaper pair of 45s. So I'm here to tell you that that is not the case, but that being said, it doesn't always matter for everybody based off of your own preferences, your own likes, as well as your own budget. So even though these things may not apply to you, I think it's important to keep top of mind when deciding on plates, as there are some trade-offs with going with the cheap route. Now for this video particularly, I'm gonna focus on metal plates. And for that, there's really three kinds of metal plates to discuss. There's cast iron, which is what we're gonna focus on in this video, as those are the cheapest plates available in most cases. There's also machined and or milled plates. However, those are more expensive and also more accurate. And finally, there's calibrated plates, which are even more expensive, but even more accurate. So we're gonna focus on cast iron plates for this video. There are other plates out there like bumper plates, which I'm not gonna make a video on, but if you wanna see videos on the other type of plates that are out there, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll definitely take that into consideration. For this video, I'm also only gonna talk about buying brand new because going the second hand market changes things a little bit. I'll probably talk a little bit to that, but I don't wanna to get too into it because there's really a wide variance of what you can get on the secondhand market and it really depends on your own location. Again, if you wanna see a video on that kind of stuff, let me know in the comment section below again. So cast iron plates is what we're gonna focus on today. Now for this, there's a couple of things to look at. These are in no particular order because it really depends again on what's of most importance to you. So I'm just gonna go through a couple of things. Number one is the diameter of the plate itself. So a standard Olympic plate being a 45 pound or a 20 kg weight set, we'll just assume that because that's also gonna adhere to the 25 kilo, the 55 pound weights, or the 100 pound weights. They should all have a standard diameter of around 450 millimeters, which is about 17.7 .7 inches. Now I say that this is important for these plates and probably not the other ones because these are the plates that are gonna be touching the ground when you have the barbell on the ground. So think of things like deadlifts, pendlay rows. If you're doing Olympic weightlifting and working on your snatch, which you probably wouldn't be using these cast iron plates for, but anytime the barbell is on the ground, those are the plates that are probably gonna be making contact with it because chances are you're not gonna have like a five pound plate and be doing deadlifts with you know a total of 55 pounds or a five on each side of a 45 pound bar. So the standard plates here sizes that we're talking about is 450 millimeters, 17.7 inches or so. This is important because with a lot of the cheaper plates, what you'll find is the diameter is not as much. In fact, it can be as little as 15 inches. So you're losing about two inches, which again, talk to any guy out there, and that's quite a significant amount. Now, think how that translates to some of your lifts that you do from the floor, especially deadlifts. So if you're a power lifter like I am, deadlifts is one of the main compound movements you have to do. And if you're now two inches closer to the ground because your plates are not as diameterous, diameterous, wow, that is a new one. So if they don't have a standard diameter, they're not only putting you closer to the ground, they're putting the barbell closer to the ground, which means it's gonna be a lot more difficult to pull from the floor. Now, some people might spin this and say that, hey, I'm closer to the floor, this is almost like it's a deficit deadlift because it's putting me in a worse position. Then when I switch to the floor or go to a competition, I'll actually be in a higher position, which means the pull should be easier. And you might be able to convince yourself that, but just think of how much time you're gonna put into effort learning a movement pattern that's not going to be the same as your actual competition lift. So it can put you at a great disadvantage in that sense. So the, the diameter of the plate is one of the first things you wanna take a look at for any plate that you buy. Again, it should be as close to 450 millimeters or 17.7 .7 inches as you can get. Now. Let's talk a little bit else about diameter because another diameter to talk about is the center hole. Now, obviously most Olympic barbells or all Olympic barbells should in theory have a two inch sleeve on them, which means the hole diameter for any weight plate should be right around two inches or so. For this, what you'll find is a lot of the cheap cast iron plates, which are all cast iron plates because they're all cheap in that regard. 
hole tolerance is all over the place. So it's very inconsistent from plate to plate. So you might have some that fit more snug than others, but you can have some holes that are actually really wide. In fact, here's a picture of one that's about two and a half inches. And again, even a half inch makes a huge difference. Ask all your men friends out there. With this, what you'll usually find with these bigger diameters for the center holes is the plates won't sit flat or flush in a bar, especially as you start to pile them up. They'll wobble a lot. So if you're doing something from the floor again, you'll get this tilted looking plate, some clanging, and the plates will actually tend to shift more off of the bar as well. So if you're the type to not always use collars, this could lead to plates slipping off the end, or in some instances, if the tolerance is actually less than two inches, you could actually have it be the case where you're not able to get the plate on the bar, which would be a very, very bad thing. So that's another thing to pay attention to. So we talked about the diameter of the plate, we talked about the center hole diameter, but that's not where everything ends because one of the biggest issues with cheaper cast iron plates is the weight tolerance allowances in it. So like I said, weight is not weight in my opinion because you could very easily buy a cast iron plate that has anywhere even up to and over a 10% difference from what's listed on the plate itself. Meaning that if you buy a 45 pound plate, I've seen ones that have weighed as little as 40 pounds and ones that have weighed even over 50 pounds. And again, in your mind, that might not mean much because you know what's five pounds? Well think for instance, if you had a whole barbell and you were lifting what you thought was 495 pounds, which is 545s on each side of the bar. Let's say every single weight plate you had was five pounds over, you would actually be lifting about 550 pounds. Or on the opposite side of the spectrum, let's say every plate was five pound under what it should have been, you would be lifting 450 pounds. So just think about how that might impact your lifting if you're going and training on what you think is 500 pounds and you think that's your max, and in reality it's 450 pounds and you go to a powerlifting competition to max out and you set your opener, your second attempt, and your third attempt based off what you think your max is, you're in for a rude awakening. Now, of course, it's probably not gonna be the case where you're gonna get plates that are either all under or all over. You're probably gonna have a hodgepodge of both on either end. But then again, the bottom line is you're still not gonna have a very accurate reading on your plates, and you could have one side that's more tilted in the favor of heavy versus the left-hand side. So I know personally that when I've gone to public gyms and have trained, sometimes I feel like I might have misloaded and have like an extra five pound plate on one side or forgot to take something off. Reality, there's just that much variance in a lot of these cheaper plates that it can really throw you off. Again, in the grand scheme of things, for some people it might not make a difference, but long-term over time, I much rather would invest a little bit more and make sure my weights are a little bit more accurate. And again, that's where you start to see some of these machined, milled, or even calibrated plates. One of the reasons why they're more expensive is because there's processes in the manufacturing that ensures that they're closer to their said weight. And Alan Thrall has a great video on this. There's tons of instances you can see on the rest of YouTube as well. In fact, I've been to a lot of gyms that actually take like a metallic Sharpie and weigh all the plates and write exactly how much they weigh. That way, if there's a plate that's either really heavy or really light, they can kind of set it off to the side or they might mark it to make sure that people are fully aware that they're not actually using the weight that's indicated on it. So there's always that as well. So those are some of the main things from the specs to look out for. But in addition to that, the way the manufacturing process is, you'll find a lot of these cheaper cast iron plates just don't really stand up. I've already noted the differences from plate to plate, even if you're buying from the same manufacturer, whether it be the diameter of the plate, the diameter of the center hole, the weight that it weighs itself, but also in the construction and finish of the plate. You'll have plates that are mismatched in terms of color, mismatched in terms of thickness, mismatched in terms of how they actually finish some of the lettering on the plates where some will have like a gray finish and some won't have any finish whatsoever. And also the general construction you'll find a lot more apt to have chips, cracks, and not stand the test of time with heavy use. So dropping the plates repeatedly, which for most people is part of the normal process, at least controlled drops I would say from deadlifts and whatnot, you can actually have these plates break in half. So again, in my opinion, even though cheap plates might be a very appealing option for some because of the price, the long term, it isn't really worth it in terms of training compared to what you can get for paying a little bit more. So speaking about price, as I mentioned, most of them are around a dollar a pound. If you're going to go with these 
cast iron plates, what I would very much suggest is trying to find some locally. As I mentioned, typically you can get them from Amazon, you can get them from Walmart. And if you're gonna get them locally, or at least ones where are easily returnable, I would actually pull them out of the package and weigh them. And if you have any ones that are substantially heavier or lighter than what they're supposed to be, send them back and return them. Again, you can do that. And I've known many people that go and buy a bunch of plates from Walmart because they have sales occasionally and they can deal with the smaller diameter of the actual plate and the other issues, but they wanna try to get as accurate of weights as possible. And they'll buy a whole bunch, take them home, weigh them all, take back the ones that don't really weigh what they should and exchange them and keep doing that process over time until they have a set that's mostly normal. I will say again, what I'm giving you here is extreme examples. So even though I've seen 40 pound plates and I've seen 50 pound plates, I've also seen a lot of plates that come in right around 45 pounds as they should. But again, it's just kind of a gamble doing so, and unless you go out and weigh it, you really don't know where you stand. Another thing I've seen some other issues with the actual casting of the iron and the plates itself, is you get a lot of sloppiness around the finishes, so there could be chunks from the plates missing, there could be things that are overhanging, especially when it comes to the center hole diameter. If you have some of that stuff, that could not only be a hard time to get on the bar itself, but it could also damage the bar. There's just a bunch of risk with it, and for me, it's just not worth it. But Again, if you're the type that doesn't really care about some of those things that I've mentioned, they can be a cheap, easy way to get weight into your house, but I would probably avoid ordering them online if they come with shipping cost, because if you're getting 800 pounds of cheap weights, it's still 800 pounds that you may potentially have to pay shipping for, and in that case, I might wanna pay a little bit extra and get the better quality plates, because it's gonna probably cost the same to ship it. So. Hopefully that helps you guys with some insight. As I said, if you wanna see videos about machined or milled, calibrated, or even bumper plates, let me know in the comments section below. I will probably talk about buying plates secondhand because that's part of my process of what I was doing when I was trying to select weights. That was my intention, but it doesn't always work out so well for all of us out there. So hopefully this video helped. Let me know what questions you have in the comment section below. But in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.